What is the likelihood of you becoming wealthy based on your current career path and income? Should you stay on the path or give your startup idea a chance? These and other questions have no clear answers in our complex world, but probabilistic thinking helps us to improve our accuracy. It helps to increase our odds in a game called life. Think about it like playing poker, where you try to bet heavily when the odds are in your favor, but also fold when the chance of losing is too high. In this video, I want to expand your mental model lattice work to include probabilistic thinking. We will discuss three important aspects of probability and how you can use it in your daily life. Welcome to Unlocking, your source for practical insights on business, learning and self-development. In a world where we lack perfect information, probabilistic thinking helps us to make better decisions. Even early humans had to make quick probability of surviving in the environment. What do you do when you see a tiger or a snake? Nowadays, our life is much safer and we need this thinking to fright in this complex world. Three aspects help us to improve our accuracy. Let's start with number one, Bayesian thinking. Bayesian thinking goes back to English minister Thomas Bayes, who wrote an essay called An Essay Towards Solving a Problem in the Doctrine of Chances. It was the basis for adjusting probabilities by adding new data. Imagine you have a jar full of 100 marbles and 10 of them are red. If I asked you to guess the chance of picking a red marble from the jar, you might say 10 out of 100 or 10%. That's a good guess. But what if I told you someone had just taken 5 marbles out of a jar and all 5 were red? Would you still guess the chance of picking a red marble is 10%? With Bayesian thinking, we can adjust our guess based on new information. For example, after hearing about the five red marbles that were just taken out, the chance of picking a red marble is now higher than 10%, maybe even 50%. Bayesian thinking helps us update our guesses based on new evidence to make better predictions about what might happen. Or think about this headline, violent stabbing on the rise. Maybe you get scared and don't go outside anymore. Or start treating any strangers at night like potential killers. But then your Bayesian thinking kicks in. You know that violent crime is at its lowest rate in years and the chances of getting stabbed is 1 in 10,000. So even if the stabbing doubled this year, the rate is only 2 in 10,000. Is this chance really worth being terrified? Alright, let's go to aspect number 2, fat-tailed curves. At first, many people get afraid of the concept of fat-tailed curves because it puts them back to their school years where you might have to grapple with this concept. But it's actually quite easy. To make it easier, let's start with a normal distribution. A good example is the heights of people. The average height of an American man is 5 feet 9 inches. So on the right side, you would have taller people. Think about NBA players kind of height. And on the left, smaller people. The important point here is you would never have somebody who is 10, 12 or even 20 feet tall. There is zero chance. Now compare it to the fat tail curves. At first, they might look similar, but don't get fooled. For example, you can get an, an average re return of 7 to 8% in the financial market. But there are rare cases like the stock market crash in 2008 and people can nearly lose everything. There is almost no cap on how much you can lose. And of course, a small size of people can also win much bigger. Think about Michael Berry in The Big Short. Nassim Taleb calls these extreme events black swan events. Even if we can't plan for these events, we must still take them to account in our calculation for events. All right, up to the final aspect, asymmetries. Asymmetries mean a situation where the reward is much bigger than the risk or the other way around, where the risk is much bigger than the reward. Let's say we flip a coin. If it's head, I get three dollars. If it tails, you get one dollar. The asymmetry is in my favor and I would play the game anytime. In an ideal world, we try to play where our rewards are much bigger than the risk, especially if it comes to money. Another example would be driving a car without a seatbelt. For you, it might be the reward of feeling freedom and comfort, but the risk of serious or potentially deadly injuries outweighs this reward. Conclusion. Probabilistic thinking helps us to stake the deck of life in our favor. But even if the odds are in your favor, you can still lose, no matter which game you are playing. Take this mental model as one more tool in your toolbox. 
if you combine it with others, like inversion, you can unlock whole new levels. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, give my video about inversion a shot. Cheers.